the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. I want to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahusha, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of the great millstone who rule well. And as always, peace and salutations to the hopefully elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, this lesson was inspired by um, some things that the apostle Tahar had mentioned at the uh, at their last uh, camp that they did uh, Saturday, and uh, you know the apostles was going into prophecy, and he had brought out how he saw you know back in the day, which was uh, before my time, you know there was this uh, documentary called The Late Great Planet Earth. And he was saying how, you know, it was, you know, pretty accurate on, you know, some of the things that they was expounding on concerning prophecy. And one of the things that they were going into was, um, you know, how the end would come. And they alluded to, you know, this place going out by thermonuclear annihilation. And when I heard Apostle Tahar, you know, mention that, you know, it kind of sparked me to go and actually, you know, watch the, uh, the documentary. You know, he was recommending brothers to watch it. So, you know, the spirit had me actually go ahead. He said it was on YouTube. Went and start, searched it up on YouTube. It popped up and I watched it. It's a pretty solid uh, documentary. You know, he saw, you know, you could tell he saw really does his thorough research, man. You know, that's why, I, you know, started off with the quote in uh, Luke 16. You know, how the children of this world, which is which are the Edomites, you know, they're wiser than. The children of light, you know, the children of light representing Israel because, you know, we have uh, the law. You know, we have the, the, the commandments. We have the scriptures. But he saw he actually has more understanding of, of, of our prophecies and, 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 you know, how, you know, our uh, prophets moved. And, you know, they even have more better understanding of our biblical history than a lot of Jake do. You know, it tells you that in Ezekiel that, you know, he's wiser than Daniel, man. But anyway, um, I have the uh, the video paused at around like uh, 37, almost 38 minutes in. And this uh, narrator right here, he started going into how the prophets, you know, when they saw their in their visions, they saw, you know, things thousands of years into the future and how advanced scientifically and technologically they were. And all they can do was use uh, terms that they were only familiar with to compare with what they were actually seeing in the vision. And I want to actually play this part of the video and let him, you know, expound on that because you know, certain people will have a hard time understanding how we draw certain conclusions on you know some of these uh, prophecies, like for example, you know when we go into how um, America being Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction, and we'll go into scriptures where it talks about how these uh, nations, you know, the Medes, uh, all the allied uh, countries that are with uh, the Russians, how they're going to shoot arrows upon Babylon and leave it desolate. Now ask yourself, how could arrows, how could bow and arrows be shot and that be the 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 the, the utensil to wipe out an entire uh country? You know, that wouldn't make any sense. So obviously the prophet from back then, you know, he had to use arrow as a a comparison to what he was actually witnessing or seeing in his vision, which was thousands of years into the future. So he used what you call similitude, okay? And, you know, this narrator actually breaks that down. So without further ado, I'm gonna actually play this segment of the video, and then uh, we'll get some scriptures and get understanding, all right? So uh, without further ado, let's uh, listen. I'm speaking to you today from the last battlefield on planet Earth. It's out here that the last stages of history as we know it will be decided. We're told not only in the Bible what will happen here, but when. The exact sequence of events that will occur here are given in prophecy. 
The prophet Zechariah tells us that the soldiers who fight here will have a most unusual way of dying. First of all, the flesh will be consumed off of their bones, the eyes consumed out of their sockets, and the tongue consumed out of their mouth. But the strange thing is, he says that this will all occur before they can fall to the ground. There's nothing like that except nuclear war. And that's, you know, that's, that's interesting because, you know, we normally bring out that scripture. You know, it talks about the day of the Lord shall burn as an oven. And then it says in Zechariah, the 14th chapter, when the Lord defends us, that, you know, he's going to bring a plague that's going to, you know, cause their eyes to consume in their holes and their tongues to consume away in their mouths. And all this is going to happen while they stand upon their feet. The only way that can even happen is uh, through thermonuclear uh, technology, man. That's the only uh, instrument that can do that, you know, on, on the planet Earth. So they actually got this right. And this was back in 1979. You see? So he saw he actually, he uses his head, man. But let's continue. Like even this right here, they showing, you know, um, the detonation of uh, nuclear warheads. And, you know, what does it form when it uh, detonates? That mushroom cloud. And John, as well as Isaiah, actually saw this take place. And what did they uh, compare it to? They compared it to a, a, a scroll being rolled together. So he, they were using similitude to explain what they were seeing. You see that? But let me uh, continue. The prophets describe events of enormous destructive power, and yet no one understood them in ancient times. Now technologically we see how they could happen. I think one of the most amazing things is the book of Revelation. Here we have a man that speaks of being transported in almost a divine time machine into the future from the first century to almost the end of the 20th century. And he was told to write what he saw and heard. And yet, how could a first century man describe what he saw in the very advanced scientific and technological age that we're in? He had to go back into his own times and take from the phenomena from which he was familiar and uh, bring it into bear and, and try to describe these things in terms of the phenomena of the first century. From the throne issue flashes of lightning and voices, and peals of thunder, and great hailstones, heavy as a hundred pounds, dropped on men from heaven, till men cursed God for the plague of the hail. The sky vanished, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. incidences that indicate the nuclear holocaust is in Revelation chapter 8, where it speaks of John seeing something that looked to him like a meteor hitting the atmosphere, burning and flaming, and then hitting the earth. I believe he was describing beautifully exchange of intercontinental ballistic missiles, which look like a meteor when they re-enter the earth's atmosphere. Come on, man. Is this not on point? Because that's exactly how this world is going to pass away. Thermonuclear uh, annihilation, man. Destruction. So they was on point with this. And this is, you know, over 40 years now. 40 years ago. All right. So let me uh, real quick. Let me get a, a couple scriptures to show you that the prophets, you know, they use similar to, which really the Mosai was using similar to you know, through the prophets. And that's why you got to have the uh, the Holy Spirit to to be able to understand the, these comparisons. Let's get a, 
Hosea. Actually, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, ho let me get Hosea 12. Hosea 12, verse 10. And it says, I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. And what are, you know, what are similitudes? Similitudes are basically comparisons of the likeness or the resemblance of a thing. All right. It says the quality or state of being similar to something, resemblance, similarity, likeness, sameness. All right. A comparison between two things, you know, basically two things that parallels. And like the point that the narrator was uh, making, they had to make a comparison using things that they only understood in his time and use that to compare to what they saw in the future. All right. So when when John the Revelator saw uh, uh, World War One and he saw those uh, those World War One uh, war planes and he, he compared them to uh, scorpions. All right. Let's go there real quick. Yeah. Uh, Revelation 9 and verse, uh, it's like your locust. Yeah, Romans 9 and uh, 2, it says, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the uh, of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the Mosai in their foreheads. All right. So let me jump down. This is talking about World War One, you know, which a, it, a lot of people died, a lot of casualties. But, you know, this wasn't going to be the end all be all. The elect, you know, had to be sealed. So in that process, it was going to be, you know, uh, more things that were going to happen. All right. Is uh, verse seven. It says, "And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads, whereas it were crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions." All right. Now, uh, dealing with the uh, Locusts. He said the shapes of them were, were were like the locusts. Now you look up those war planes <clears throat> real quick. And you look at you know what they with with their shape like. You could compare them to actual uh, locusts. Because planes did not exist during the time of uh, John. We talking about the first first century. Let me uh, open this in another. Open in a new tab. Uh, I guess I can't zoom in. All right, here is here's one. Let me uh open this up. Damn, all right, whatever. Uh, hopefully y'all can see, but you know, 
when John CDs, all he saw was, uh, you know, flying locusts. Okay. When we look at, you know, the shape of a locust, they're very similar. <clears throat> yep, I'll, I'll use this one. All right, like from the side, the side angle, and you look at it, you know, you can you can see, you know, because they didn't know what a what a plane was. All they saw was the shape of what they saw in the sky, and he compared it to a to a locust. Okay, so it, right here he's using similitude, and he said it was like unto horses prepared unto battle. So you know they they were basically prepared for war. So this is describing a uh, a scenario of war. All right, and on their heads were. As they were crowns of gold and their faces were like the faces of men because there were men okay you can go and look up the history of world war one okay a lot of a lot of casualties it says uh and they had the hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and when you go to those uh helmets that those uh germans uh wore Now, don't, let me see, because I think they might have them here. Because it actually has women, uh, it has hair coming out the top. Yeah, you see that? Let me uh, let me X out of that. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Here it is. So this is what they were wearing, and this is exactly what uh, John the Revelator saw, man. Showing you that the prophecy is on point. Okay. So, hey, there it is. So. That's an example of uh, using similar to, all right? Another another example is uh, when they use arrows. Now, let's, let's, let's go to a prophecy dealing with the arrows jacking up Babylon. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. It talks about the destroying wind, which we all know that when the when the uh, detonation of a nuclear warhead hits, it lets off that destroying wind, and those are the winds right now that the angels are holding back. You know, while the elect are being uh, sealed, which is why even going back to the time of uh, the Cold Wars, you know, there's uh, studies on how uh, the, the the chariots they actually would stop a, 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 a nuclear facility. From being uh, activated and you know launching a, a missile, you know, because it, it you know back in those days it wasn't the time. There's still a, a lot more things according to prophecy to be fulfilled, like the MOTB, you know, uh, the, the the camps, you know, the Great Awakening, 
of Israel. Okay. Uh, the build up to uh, World War III, the Lord gathering the armies in the Middle East, all that has to happen before the annihilation. But all all these different prophets, they all saw that. That was the end game. That was the pretty much the end before the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of, of the kingdom. So um, uh, Jeremiah 51 and 1, it says, Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And I will send unto Babylon fanners, and they shall fan her and shall empty her land. So something's going to let off a wind that's going to empty, you know, sweep this place out. Uh, um, I think it was Isaiah that used the term the besom of destruction. When you look up that word besom, it means like a broom, a sweeping uh, instrument. You know, when you swing the broom, you know, you could, you could feel it. You can hear and feel that wind, you know, blow away the, the, the trash that you're sweeping. It says, for in the day of trouble, they shall be against her roundabout. All right. So let's uh, let me jump down. <clears throat> yeah, Jeremiah 51 and 11, it says, make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord have raised up the spirit of the Medes of the, the kings of the Medes, which is uh, the modern day Russians. Voice devices against Babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. So according to the prophecy, the Lord is going to put the spirit on these Russians and these other countries. Let's go to Jeremiah 50. And they're going to do the Lord's honor, man. Jeremiah 50 and 9, it says, for lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country. And they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. All right, so when those missiles get shot, which these missiles are going to be sophisticated, they're going to have uh, accuracy. You ain't going to be able to turn back uh, those arrows. It tells you that second Ezra is the 16th chapter. All right, they're gonna they're gonna uh, be shot off as a, as an uh, a expert man. Let's let's go there real quick. Second Ezra uh, sixteen. So even Ezra used the same similitude. They always using the same similitude of an arrow. Comparing to uh, what they saw in the future, dealing with uh, this nuclear holocaust. All right, these were uh, missiles, but they called them arrows. Uh, Second Ezra, uh, sixteen, and verse uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah. Verse 13, it says, For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So the arrows are going to be shot into the ends of the world. How can an arrow be shot from one place on, on, on the earth to the other side of the world? Because he's using similitude. The only technology that can do that, we know, is the missile. All right. So this is what the Lord is going to uh, cause to come to pass. And we know that this has not happened yet because Babylon is still here. And this was not talking about ancient Babylon or else it would still be uninhabitable to this very day. All right. Let me jump down to verse 14. It says, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about all ye that bend the bow, shoot at her, spare no arrows. For she have sinned against the Lord. And that's what's going to cause that uh, lake of fire, man, going in, uh, into the book of Revelation. All right. Where Babylon is going to be on fire. So um, real quick. You know, just to show that correlation. When you go into uh, the, the, the United States military. Uh, nuclear incident terminologies. Watch the you 
pay attention to the terms that that they actually use United States military nuclear incident terminology All right, it says uh, the United States Armed Forces uses a number of terms to define the magnitude and extent of nuclear and radiation accidents and incidents in order to reduce the time taken to report the type of incident, thus streamlining the radio communications in the wake of the event. All right, so basically they use, uh, you know, terms in code. Okay, so they so the military uses similar tool. All right. And then here's the terms that they actually use. Bent spear. Bent spear refers to incidents involving nuclear weapons, warheads, components, or vehicles transporting nuclear material that are of significant interest but are not categorized as pinnacle. Or right, nug flash or pinnacle, broken arrow, bent spear incidents include violations or breaches of handling and security regulations all right so it's you know notice that they use the term bent spear or a spear all right in association with uh you know nuclear warheads or nuclear weapons what the scriptures uh calls it the glittering uh spear See if I can uh, find it. Yeah, it talks about a glittering spear right there. Um, there was a particular scripture I was looking for though. Let me see. Uh, Matter of fact, let me get uh, Joel. Because the Lord is uh, preparing these uh, soldiers for war, right? Joel 3 and 9, it says, Proclaim you this among the Gentiles, prepare a war. Wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. All right? Use your... Uh, you know the, the 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 utensils for agriculture you know use that that money and generate that into building your nuclear arsenal all right start building uh nuclear uh, missiles and let the weak these weak nations now that you hold nuclear capability now you can say that you're strong so this is all prophecy man okay So another term, Broken Arrow, which they even made a movie called Broken Arrow. Okay. Broken Arrow refers to an accidental event that evolves nuclear weapons, warheads, or components that does not create a risk of nuclear war. All right. And I think there's another one called Empty Quiver. Yep. Empty Quiver. Empty Quiver refers to the seizure theft or loss of a functioning nuclear weapon okay and we know a quiver is basically um it's it's a a case that actually holds uh arrows okay so clearly these men they saw into the future and all they could do was use these uh uh terms and phenomenons that they were familiar with to describe you know what they were uh seeing in the vision man so they basically saw nuclear war they saw nuclear warheads they saw silos like job he saw this uh the nuclear missile come out of the silo and he and he described it as uh let me see
I know it's in Job 20. Yep, Job 20 and 25, it says it is drunk. Let me, let me go to it real quick. It's uh, Job 20 and 23, it says, When he is about to fill his belly, the Most High shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bull still shall strike him through. It is drawn and come up out of the body, and as described in the silo, yeah, the glittering sword come up out of the goal. Terrors are upon him. All right. Because hey, he's getting ready to be destroyed. So he's, you know, he's terrified. Okay. So, you know, that's the point, you know, that, that I want to actually make. And let me get one more scripture. This is going back to the time of Moses. All right, Numbers 12. And six, it says, and he said, hear my, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak to him in a dream. All right. And, you know, they would uh, have these uh, visions and uh, based on what they saw, they would uh, speak in, in, in similar to. OK. It says, uh, verse 7, my servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? All right. So, hey, sim uh, similitude. All right. That they will see in, 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 in these visions. And they would make that comparison and they would describe it and write it down and then of course this the holy spirit got to be upon you uh job 32 and 8 and it says but there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth them understanding and that's why the apostles are able to you know uh distinguish and you know decipher a lot of these uh prophecies man and we learn from them and you know we 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 teach it so you know uh if y'all watch this a hey, chew the meat and spit out the bones okay some good information in the documentary but also they go off at certain parts in the, in the documentary you know, they was even trying to break down uh the number of the beasts you know 603 score six and uh they was even trying to use the um um the uh um basically the when when, when you determine the new nu numerical value of, of of a person they was basically trying to go into the uh geometrical analysis you know, dealing with these uh, presidents, they they was using uh, Ronald Reagan, Carter, uh, you know, Kennedy, just to see if their uh, numerical value added up to uh, that particular number. You know, but you know they was going off. All right, but anyway, you know, that was on point. You know, what that narrator was saying, and I want to actually utilize that in in a lesson. To show that the prophets did use similar to it's like they had to jump into a time machine and they saw, saw everything but they had to use terms to describe what they were seeing you know that were uh, familiar to them you know so uh hey you know that, that's pretty much the lesson i hope this was edifying let me give all praise glory and honor to y'all by shimmy shy and to the next time i say shalom